Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Atonement here in Westfield, Massachusetts, where we are drawn in by grace and we reach out in love. It is just about 10 a.m. on this third Sunday in Advent, December 13th, 2020. And here is our Advent wreath. And as you can see, we have not lit the candles yet. This year, four of our atonement households are sharing their Advent wreaths with all of us. So before today's opening hymn, we will join the Baileys and the Burks and the Bell Roses for the lighting of the candles and then go to our first hymn. Please follow along in your service leaflet this morning, which you can find in your emailed newsletter. If you did not get that email, which was sent out early this morning, please go to our website, atonementwestfield.org. And at the bottom of the home page on the left-hand side, you will find a link to today's leaflet. Now let our worship continue with the lighting of the Advent wreath. The evening of the year is upon us. We enter the darkness and wait for light's return. We light one candle to remind us of God's light which has come to us all through the Christ. We open our hearts to that light and ask for help to shine with the brilliance of love. We light a second candle to remind us of the light of justice in the prophet's words. We open our hearts to the light of justice and ask for help to create a just world. We light the third candle to remind us of John who calls us to wade in the waters of new life. We open our hearts to our own lights, enkindled in baptism, and ask to, for help to carry that light into a dark world.
of our waiting is a waiting for God. God of our hearts, we wait for you alone. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. you and also with you let us pray stir up your power O Lord and with great might come among us and because we are sorely hindered by our sins let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. <clears throat> they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us read together Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then will we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they say among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. <clears throat> Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, this is the testimony given by John when the religious authorities sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? 
He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had been sent from the Pharisees, they asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At the beginning of today's service, just a few moments ago, we watched a three-part video brought to us by the Bailey, Burke, and Belrose families. First of all, it is important for you to know that there are families who belong to the Church of the Atonement whose last names do not begin with B. Second, you all know that next week there is a fourth part to add to this video, so if your family would like to participate, please give me a call after the service. I'm talking, of course, about the lighting of the Advent wreath. Ava and Luke lit the third candle today, and when I asked them to make their video, I reminded them that today is the day to light the pink candle. It is also called the rose candle. And in some places, today is referred to as Rose Sunday. Now, there are many traditions about lighting the Advent candles. In some places, the candles are all one color, but each one has a name, peace, hope, joy, and love. In some places, the candles are associated with biblical figures, Isaiah, John the Baptist, Mary, Joseph. And then on Christmas Eve, the candle in the middle is lit to signify the birth of the baby Jesus. In some places, there are simply candles that are lit, one more each week, the light on the wreath growing, at the same time that at least here in the northern hemisphere, the natural light is reaching its shortest daily duration. On this Rose Sunday, I have to tell you, I love all of the traditions, even when they contradict each other. And I'm not going to try to convince you that one of them is better than the other. Although a friend of mine did text me right before this service to ask me which color candle he should light this morning. The Advent wreath helps us to mark this waiting time, waiting for Christmas waiting for the birth of the baby Jesus. But much more than that, we wait in hope and expectation for Christ to come into our broken world to make all things new. And so I cannot help but make the connection about waiting, waiting for the vaccine. This is the strangest advent any of us have ever known. The world is grieving over the death of so many people. 1.6 million people are dead worldwide. Over 71 million have the disease today. It has been a hundred years since there has been a pandemic anything like this one. And yet, tomorrow, they will start shipping a vaccine to the United States. We are waiting. And we sort of know what we are waiting for. We are beginning to get an idea of how long we will be waiting. Maybe. Maybe we think 
By this time next year, we won't have to invite our families to send us a video of lighting the Advent candles. We may just light them with all of us standing in this room together. But now, we wait. We wait for Christmas in less than two weeks. We wait for the coming of Christ at the end of history. And somewhere in between those two spiritual and historic events, we are waiting for the opportunity to embrace health for ourselves and to promote health for everyone we love. We're waiting to get vaccinated. While we are waiting, we recognize that for some, life has changed forever. We are grieving. And the very thing that we usually do to help people out when they are grieving, visiting them, rallying around them, making a casserole for them, gathering the people together, those are the very things that we cannot do while we wait. Advent is the season of waiting and expectation, and the pandemic has forced us all into the saddest waiting time that I have ever experienced. So bear with me, because I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Rose Sunday. See, Advent wreaths are not the only tradition associated with this time before Christmas, for over a thousand years, this third Sunday of Advent has been known as Rejoicing Sunday, or in the Latin, Gaudete Sunday. The tradition is that, in addition to lessons from the prophets, reminding us of the promises of God to be with us in our sorrow, the service would begin with the singing of a couple of verses of St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. We have long since taken up a new tradition. We sing a hymn at the beginning of the service. But even though we no longer enter on chanted lines of scripture, we remember the joy it is the joy that turns the third candle of our Advent wreath from purple to pink. In some churches, the priests even get to wear pink vestments. Not here, alas. In our opening collect, we begged God to stir up God's power and come among us. Well, we asked for it, and so we rejoice in the good news of Jesus. And the heavy purple lightens to rose. In one way or another, every one of the readings that are appointed for today acknowledge the hard lives that we humans live. Isaiah, in our first lesson, Isaiah was talking about the return of Israel from captivity. A whole nation had been dispersed into a foreign land, but God was promising their return. The psalm sang of an earlier return and likened it to the end of a deathly drought. Our second lesson reminds a people who are grieving the loss of their loved ones that God wants us to be thankful, even in our sorrow. And then we have the story of John the Baptizer. John comes to the people and reminds them of God's forgiveness and more, because with God there is always more. John promises the people that one is standing among them who is greater than he. That promise the same promise from our first lesson and the implied promise in the second lesson, that promise is that we are not alone in our grief, in our sin, in our sorrow. We human beings are not alone in our hard times. 
we are not alone in a pandemic. God's presence is always with us, bearing us up and nourishing us with love. There is so much in our world that is just wrong. Pandemic and racial discord and political upheaval here and abroad. And those are just the wrong things that we all kind of have a stake in. We each have our individual sorrows too. But John reminds us that there stands among us one who is greater than any one of us. One who is greater than any of our problems. He's talking about Jesus, of course. And we hear this story about John and Jesus, Jesus all grown up, right? We hear this story about John and Jesus on this Sunday so near to Christmas because, of course, Jesus has already been born. We are preparing to celebrate Christmas, the birth of Jesus in 12 days, but, but really every day is Christmas. Every day is the day in which God is born to be our companion on this earth. And in the middle of a pandemic and all the rest that is so wrong, we may stand up and declare that something is right. We are not alone. Our God does not live above the world or apart from the world. Our God was born into the world in the small, poor child of Mary. Our God lived among us and knew about a world in which so much was wrong. And when the world turned murderous, our God broke the bonds of death and promised to be with us always. Always. Even in a global pandemic, we are called to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances. That is, we are reminded that there is never a moment when God is not with us. Every one of us comes from God. Every gift we have comes from God. We love one another with God's love. What are we waiting for in this Advent season of waiting and expectation? Are we waiting for Christmas or for the end of the world? Are we waiting for the vaccine? At the beginning of this service, we proclaimed that all of our waiting is a waiting for God. And we know that God is always with us. And so on this Rose Sunday, in the middle of a global pandemic, 12 days before Christmas, when there is so much wrong in the world, we can join together and proclaim that God is with us and there is joy. And now I invite you to join with us and proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of the prophets, give us courage to speak the truth and to tell of your love. God of the prophets, hear us and tell us. God of the angels, give us a voice to sing your presence into the world. Give the world a freedom song and help us to speak peace throughout the earth. God of the angels, hear us and tell us. God of Mary and Elizabeth, give us grace to be pregnant with hope and to bring forth new life in a barren world. God of our mothers, hear us and help us. God of Zechariah and Joseph, give us dreams and visions and the courage to follow them. God of our fathers, hear us and help us. God of the shepherds, give us humility and to all who sit in darkness, alone and afraid, a light from heaven proclaiming peace. God of the shepherds, hear us and help us. God of the Magi, send your blessing on Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Nancy, our rector, and Jess, our program minister. Give to all your church the will to leave home to find you among the poor. God of the Magi, hear us and help us. God of the Holy Innocents, send your blessing on all in authority in our nation and the world. Give us power to stand against violence and to protect the powerless. God of the victim, hear us and help us. God of all of us, remember those people and circumstances that are so important to us. God of the present, hear us and help us. God of all who went before us, we remember before you all who have died, especially Fred, Grace, and Butch Burrell, in whose memory the sanctuary lamp burns, and Don Watson, in whose memory live streaming equipment has been given, and Helen Vaught, recently departed, and all those we call before you now. God of the past, hear us and help us. God, our sovereign, you are always coming into the world. Come to us now, soon, and forever, and let us receive you as the child of holiness and the wind of change through whom we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
Peace to you. Peace. <laughs> Peace to you. Peace to all of you at home. I always I, I welcome you again to this service of Holy Eucharist here from the Church of the Atonement in Westfield, Massachusetts. And I want to let you know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six of us here today, a live streaming team of six people. We are all wearing masks. We are doing our best to keep an appropriate social distance. And we are grateful to all of you who are putting up with all of these restrictions and still gathering together Sunday by Sunday to worship God. This is what we can do to take care of one another while we wait. And I thank you for that. And I apologize if you have had any technical glitches. We've already had three or four technical glitches here this morning. And we're just all, you know, kind of trying to do the best we can. Today, at 4 p.m. on this third Sunday in Advent, as we always do on the third Sunday of Advent, we are going to have a service of Advent lessons and carols brought to you by our Choral Scholars and Choral Scholars alumni and the Choir of Atonement. And it is all on YouTube and Facebook. Beginning at 4 p.m., we will do the first stream at 4 p.m. today, but really it is available after 4 p.m. today at any time you want to watch during this season, and I commend this service to you. Our music director, Scott Bailey, has worked very hard giving all of us who love to sing the opportunity to sing in a safe way, and then Scott learned how to put it all together and make us actually sound good together, which I credit a lot to his technological capability and a lot to the beautiful voices, particularly of our choral scholars. So please do join in today at 4 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook for Advent Lessons and Carols. And we are working on a virtual Christmas pageant. Our program minister, Jess Lee, has been working with some of our families. And if you want to get involved, please be in touch with Jess. Wave, Jess. So, yep. Uh, so, Jess is here. Um, please be in touch. You can borrow costumes from us or you can use your own costumes. You can video with sound and you can read some of the pageant parts or we can just have pictures of little shepherds and little angels. Adults are very welcome to join in the fun and we will be putting all of those video clips together and stream the pageant on Christmas morning. When I was growing up, nobody was allowed to do anything on Christmas morning until my mother woke up. And my mother loved to sleep late. So, and in those days, you know, it was before videotapes, right? So what was there to do in the morning? I remember one notable Christmas when my father read an entire book to us, a thick <laughs> chapter book, because mom was just not waking up. So, so, if you need something for the kids to do on Christmas morning, our Christmas pageant will be streaming on Christmas morning. Get it set up before you go to bed and make them watch it three or four times. It, it'll be fun. We're also, of course, going to have a Christmas service, which will be live streamed at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve and be available throughout the season. So we hope you will join us for all of these Christmas uh, worship events. Today, following today's service, we have a virtual coffee hour on the Zoom platform so we can see and talk to one another. And I welcome anyone to attend our Zoom coffee hour. To get the login credentials, we try to make it just difficult enough that the people who join us actually want to have coffee with us. So go to atonementwestfield.org and look for our Sunday morning Zoom coffee hour and you will get the login credentials there. I want to thank the 59 families who have made a pledge of financial support for 2021. This is this year's pledge card, which was sent to everyone in the parish. You can also make a pledge by email. 
It's not too late for you to make your pledge of financial support for 2021 because we need the support of each member of this church in order to continue to be a place that reaches out in God's love. Please know that every contribution that you make, including whatever you are able to give today, goes to help this parish church share the transforming love of Jesus in a broken world. Now walk in love, as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. 
For in these last days, you have sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, And bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love, make haste to do kindness, shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger, walk in justice, that you may follow the path of mercy and love. And the blessing of God who comes to us unbidden, who for our lives was broken, and in whose spirit we are guided into wholeness and holiness of life, be among you and those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.